gentlemen, it is official. Nobody cares about the light heavyweight title. It's true. <laughs> it's true. Freaking one person's opinion, darn it. <laughs> one person's opinion. <laughs> We're back for our NXT review. Uh, we might have a video uh, talking about uh, the top 15 titles and no one cares about, which does include the light heavyweight title. I'm just throwing it out there. It does include it. So we, It also we, includes your European title. Shut up. That is the greatest title ever. It's the, it yeah. includes both your European title and the Cruiserweight title. So, <laughs> I mean, but is it the WCW one or the WWE one? Because let's face the one it, from the it's double, double WWE one, one. I think. <laughs> anyway, let's let's jump right into it. Is NXT review? Uh, just, it felt really short this week. I don't know why. For some reason, the show felt really short. But uh, we open up with uh, Tommaso Ciampa coming out on some crutches. Um, he he did have. Um, I heard this earlier in the week that he did have an actual an, an ankle injury, and I guess a knee injury might also be there too. Um, but uh, he uh, calls Johnny out, you know, saying he feels like he should give Johnny an ex- an explanation on the attack at Takeover, and then remembers that Johnny's not here uh, tonight. Um, he talks about how the Thursday before takeover, uh, he had sustained the injury, and immediately fans were replacing him with dream partners for Johnny. Um, so I, I really do. I, I like Tommaso Ciampa, and I, I like him kind of being a heel. But I don't know if you felt the same way. But it this to me, he just didn't feel like into it like i didn't feel the feeling in it until he got to the end and then he started to get intense with uh uh, with you know when he comes back but throughout the the you know promo it just felt flat it felt you know it didn't feel like he was really like into what he was saying um i don't know if you felt the same way but any thoughts i didn't didn't at all Actually, I felt like he was in passion through the whole dang old thing. Anyway, um, <laughs> I when he came out on crutches, because I didn't hear about this, oddly enough. I didn't hear about the injury, so I was like, why, why are you on crutches, though? No, 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 no. What, what's wrong with Tobaso? No. Uh, so I, I was a little sad. Um, but, yeah, I, I like when he got to the point where he was like, uh, you know, if I'm going away, then Johnny's going away, too. So that, like, explains why you know why he did what he did um and i also like the like the part about if it wasn't our our moment like pointing at him and the fans it was my moment i i like i like that i thought that was, that was a good point um i i like this though i'm I'm excited for heel tomaso champa um because i love tomaso champa anyway and i think i think he works better on his own anyway like as the well, psycho killer, psychopath, whatever. Um, I like it better. I like him better like that. So I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, we got a Danny Birch video package uh, who is going to face Pete Dunne tonight uh, in a non-title match, unfortunately. You know, not that he would win the title anyway. But uh, any thoughts on the video package for Danny? Um, I, I enjoyed the video package. It, it was kind of the same from the, the, the I almost said Cruiserweight Classic, from the UK tournament, I felt like, but I still liked it. Yeah. That's the one thing I don't like. It feels like they're just recycling those for these guys. Like, they're not making anything new to get us excited about them. Um, but uh, we get a pre-recorded interview with Bobby Roode. I, I just did that, not for anybody specific, uh, not, not that anyone – you know, likes or dislikes when we say Bobby rude, but that's just how you got to say it. Um, he was talking about an exclusive party, you know, that he was having tonight. And before you ask, yes, I was invited. Um, I had to decline, you know, I had prior engagements, but I was invited, um, to, to the, to the rude party. Um, so, you know, unfortunately I couldn't go. I, I told him next time, 
you know, I said next time I'd be there, um, you know. But uh, any thoughts on the uh, the interview with Bobby Rude? Um, I definitely liked the interview. I did. Uh, I think it continues to build on his character. Um, every time he has like one of these little like backstage or whatever the necessary backstage he was in a limo or whatever. Like every time they have these, you know, it definitely builds on the character, and and, and I like it. Um, you know, I'm I'm a, I'm a big fan of Bob Bear. Woo! I am. I am. It, it's a fact. Uh, she Sarah's gonna love this episode, uh, because we got to talk about Bobby Rude. Yeah, I I don't think she'll she won't think it's rude, will she? No, I don't think she'll think it's rude. I think that if we didn't mention it, she would think it's. Rude. <laughs> <laughs> moving on, uh, and I, I don't mean to be rude by moving on so quickly. If anyone wanted to talk about that, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> we got Danny Birch versus Pete Dunn. I really like this match. Um, we got a nice takedown in the beginning by Pete Dunn into the joint manipulation. Um, I, I knew this was going to be, you know, a tough, hard hitting match. Uh, you know, nothing pretty, as they say. Um, but am I the only one who kind of expected the commentators to say Vintage Orton when Danny did the draping DDT? Because I was waiting for it. I was waiting for somebody to say Vintage Orton, but they didn't, and I was kind of sad. Um, but uh, Pete Dunn does get the, the, the W, the win. Um, after the match, he says basically the same thing he said before um, in a, in previous um, promos. Um, since January, he's had to watch a boy carry around the title that rightfully was his. Um, talking about Tyler Bate. Um, any thoughts on the match or the uh, promo after? Um, I definitely enjoyed the match. Because um, I, I came into it thinking it was going to be like, a bona fide jobber match. I'm not gonna lie, um, or or I think I felt like it just wasn't gonna be as good as it was. And for a non-title match, that really means nothing. Because um, I mean, when you think about it, like what's it really gonna mean? Danny Burch isn't gonna challenge for the title. Let's be honest. Um, but like, I like how he he still fought as if like this could give him a title, you know, a potential title shot. And obviously if you beat the champion, that's what that means. So I, I like that. Like I, I like the competitiveness in this match. It was, it was good. And they, I feel like the, there was a lot of chemistry. There was, you know, great chemistry between these two as well. Um, it, it was a good match, especially for a match that really didn't mean anything. Yeah. yeah. Then uh, you know, we almost, we almost got an interview with the Velveteen Dream, but, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't feeling the ambiance, uh, so <laughs> I, I can't yeah. believe you're just calling this man the Velveteen Dream, like, bruh, like not even Patrick Clark, the Velveteen Dream, just Velveteen Dream, like, bruh, DJ, thoughts on the Velveteen Dream? <laughs> this was amazing. This was delightful. Like, this was great. Like this, like what I said last week, this man needs to talk. This is what I meant. This is exactly what I meant. Now, I think he needs to like sound a little bit less like Patrick Clark. Cause like I mean, because we've seen like Patrick Clark and we've seen serious Patrick Clark. So like I think it's sometimes when his voice comes out and it sounds too much like Patrick Clark, it kind of takes you out of it. Which sound, I mean, I think that sounds weird because obviously they're the same person, but still, like I think it kind of takes you out of it with this character. But I, I still, I love it though. Like I like what he's doing. Like th that was uh, like it was hilarious. Like maybe when you change this and this, like I was, I was cracking. I was like, this man is about to be the goat if he keep doing stuff like this. This is what needs to be the Velveteen Dream. Like, like when they build in this character, they got to do stuff like this. It has to happen. It, it it was amazing. I loved it. Wonderful. Shout out to Patrick Clark. Good man. Then we we get. Uh, I'm assuming you didn't like it as much as I did. I, <laughs> I 
I think that it's throwing me off that they're just calling like his ring name is just Velveteen Dream now. Like that just throws me off. I, I expect it to be Patrick Clark, the Velveteen Dream, because like I feel like Velveteen Dream seems like a nickname, not like just yeah. your name. It's weird. Like I don't know, but uh, I, I definitely I did like you know the his his character in this. I, I liked I liked the way he talked. I think it worked with his character. Um, but moving on away from that, far far away from that, because. That that poor man. That that poor man. I mean, I mean, I I'll admit I didn't like the American flag tights that he had before. But why why gotta do it like this? Why I gotta do him like this? Why like he he wasn't that bad and tough enough? Like, come on, man. Why? I, oh man, why? Anyway, we get an AOP video uh promo thingy thing. Um, I actually kind of like this, uh, especially with Paul Ellering kind of talking a little bit about Akim and Rezar, kind of a little bit giving their like kayfabe, you know, background, you know, um, history, uh, which I kind of liked, um, and, you know, starting a new kind of, I guess, new book now, um, uh, which I, I kind of liked. Any thoughts on this uh, this video package? Yeah, I like I liked it. Um, like you said, I like it's kind of like turning them a new leaf. I guess um, I, I I enjoyed it. I like I, I I like the book of pain. Now we're going to the book of dominance. I think is what he said. Yeah. Um. So I mean, I I, I want to see if anything changes or like you know, th- are there different ways to win in this book? Or, like, you know, like, is there anything going to change because there's a new book or no? So. Yeah. We get... Next we get Andrade Cien Almas versus Cesar Bonani. Um, I do. I like him. This was a jobber match where Bonani got lucky and got the roll-up and DJ loved it. Because uh, DJ loves roll-ups. He does. Uh, do you have any thoughts on this what? match? <sighs> no, when did they put a roll-up out? When they put it out, I'm a boy on Andrade. Come on, man. <laughs> um, I, I I was very upset <laughs> by this match. Like, I'm all for, you know, the jobber getting the win. No, I'm not. Um. I don't know. I just I just don't feel like the jobber should win the match. Especially like with Andrade, it doesn't feel like they're doing anything with him. He's just kind of there. Like he just came back. All right, have him lose to a jobber because that's helped a lot of people in the past. I, I remember the last person who lost to a jobber. Uh, like I remember it happening like not too long ago, but I, I don't remember what happened to that person. Like, but I know it wasn't good. So. And I was confused at the end because, like, Andrade was mad at first, and then, like, he gets out of the ring, and he's just, oh, whatever, it's fine. And then I expected him to get mad again and, like, attack somebody or something, and it just didn't happen. He's going to be broken. That's what's what's happening. Broken Andrade seeing Amos. It's going to happen. Delete. (laughs) Hashtag delete. How do you say delete in Spanish? Delito? (laughs) <laughs> I don't think that I don't think uh nope <laughs> I really don't like <laughs> El Delito <laughs> Bara Bara it's, it's coming, it's coming. I, I think it's El Delito I'm pretty sure that from Spanish class El Delito yeah I think that's that's I, I learned that, 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 taught you but yeah, I I know I learned in Spanish class. You just add O at the end of words, and they Spanish. O, fish O, and X T O. Anyway, we had a segment with Billy K, Peyton Royce, and Amber Moon. Um, I didn't I didn't get most of this until Amber Moon came out and. What a surprise. She's medically cleared a week after she had a catastrophic 
shoulder injury that she never going to come back from and she going to die. Why do they keep doing this? Like, bro, why? But why? She, she, DJ, thoughts on the segment? Yeah, I, I felt the same way. Like, I was like, bro. <laughs> like, I, I was enjoying the Payne Royce, Billy Kay, whatever the heck they were doing. I didn't know what they was doing, but I liked it. Um, <laughs> and Emma Moon come out there, and she ain't in a sling. Like, her arm is still attached. Like, for, from especially from the thing they just did last week where she was, like, talking about how she had to miss takeover. Like, it felt like she was going to die within the next week. And now she's fine. What? Like, I'm telling you, like, like when I get injured, I, I need this. I need these capabilities where I can be injured, and then the next week I'll be fine, even though it was really bad. I mean, we, I think we all need these capabilities. You know, when I get sick, the next day I'll be fine, right? <laughs> happy. WWE, help me out. Like, I don't know. Like, I know Amy said something about, like, it might be she might have had a family issue that she had to – take time away but like why why you got to do an injury angle for that like have to do an in- just do just do an oscar attack her angle and it took her out of the match not necessarily an injury or like have her attack oscar and get suspended for a week or something yeah that, that would i'd be like okay that i get but like why is it always got to be an injury that, like, <laughs> it's gonna, gonna be, be that injury where they died half where half of their body died and then <laughs> It's so dumb. Um, but, yeah. Oh, oh my God. ICWP just uh, put something up. Oh, the 205 Live review is up. Uh, go check that out. Officially, actually. Oh, it, it's official. I just saw it. got the notification. Um, we get next a I, – I feel like I, we saw this – might have been on – was it on YouTube? Or we saw this backstage segment before somewhere. Um, basically angry Hideo, um, with, uh, Cassius Ono was back there, you know, trying to kind of calm him down after his loss at TakeOver. Um, I felt like this and this, I felt like they were setting up something with him and Hideo. I, I really felt like that. And then I was waiting during the main event for like Hideo to come out and attack him or something. And it never happened. I, I feel like they keep building up these, you know, or hinting at things that we think are going to happen and they never do. But um, any thoughts on the, the locker room segment? Um, not really. <laughs> well, I'm just kidding. Uh, no. I, I, I thought this was weird. Like, I did. I thought this was kind of weird because, like, I don't think it's, like, makes sense for Hideo to be, like, I, like, I get he's upset, but, like, I feel like this is, like, out of the Hideo Atami character to me. So I was kind of confused. And then they had the whole makeup thing where they shook hands and, and stuff. I, I don't know about you, but I was expecting Hideo just to be laying on the ground like he was last time when he was outside and they did a segment. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, we get to the main event of the evening. We got Sanity, Eric Young, and Alexander Wolf versus Roderick Strong and Cassius Ono. Like I said, I was just waiting for Hideo to come out and attack Cassius or something, and nothing happened. And I was like, bruh, why, bruh? But, uh, I, I felt like this was an okay match. I didn't feel like it was a great match, but I I feel like they don't know what they're doing with like with this whole storyline. Like it keeps like they keep changing who's fighting against Sanity. Like I, first it was um, the uh, the 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 negative ten tie can't finish with you, Dillinger. And then it changed to Roderick Strong. I feel like next it's going to be Cassius Ono. Like, I feel like they're just cycling through the members that are, you know, the the head of fighting sanity. I don't know. It's just weird to me, and I feel like it's not going anywhere. Um, but any thoughts on the match? 
Um, it, it was an okay match. Uh, it, was, it was an okay match. I think Roderick Strong was the one that shined in this match, as he often does. Yeah. Um, I, I think Ono looked good in this match too. I, I enjoyed a connection zone on this match. Um, like it, it, I think it's weird, and, and maybe it's just me, but like you got Cassius Ono, Roderick Strong, and EY, and I feel like Alexander Wolf is just there. <laughs> like, like, I don't know why, but I just do. Um, who was the other guy that used to be insanity that I was excited uh, about? Sorry, Fulton, I think is who it was. Yeah, sorry, Fulton. Uh, yeah, I, I wish he was still insanity too. Like, I, I miss him. Because uh, I feel like, you know, he and Alexander Wolf could build off of each other. Because they're, I feel like they're both relative unknowns. Um, but it, it was an okay match. Like, I mean, I wasn't, uh, but it was an okay match, and I was glad to see Noah Jose was back. I was excited to see see him back, so that was cool. Yeah, I, I think I think they need to build up Alexander Wolf and uh, Demo more, just. Not to a point where we think like not like to Ooh, like a main event. I, I've actually never heard of this demo you speak of. Uh, I'm sorry, Killian Dane. Okay, yeah, I know him though. It's a stupid name, but <laughs> just to a point where it doesn't feel like they're just you know, because right now it just feels like Sanity is Ey and Nikki Cross, like, and then oh, also Alexander Wolf and. You know, Killing and Dane are there too. They don't feel as important as the other members, which I, I don't like. Um, but that was your NXT review for the date that is today. That I the thirtieth. Yeah. Thirty first. Thirty first. Thirty first. Oh, there's there's thirty one days. In, I didn't know. I don't know. I, I don't keep track of the calendar and dates and days and. St- 31st that one that that's the one you know i was just testing you to see if you knew how many days were in may you passed you passed with flying color you get a cookie you get a cookie and you also get to subscribe to the channel you also get to like the video you also get to follow us on twitter at icw underscore podcast you get all those prizes don't you feel lucky? You you come back. You come back tomorrow, and we'll have an NXT or a TNA review for you. I keep thinking we're – this threw me off that we did both of these in the same day because we usually do, like, Tuesday, Wednesday. But tomorrow we will be back for the TNA Impact Review with the owl included. There is an owl. It's there. You'll see it. I'll see it. We'll see it. Rabbit will be there, and he'll say stuff, and I'll say stuff, and DJ will say stuff, and stuff will be said, and you'll like the video, and you'll share it, and you'll subscribe if you haven't already, which you should just do now. I don't know why you're waiting. Just, it's a waste of time to wait. Just do it now. Then it'll be done. You won't have to worry about it. It's kind of like when you were growing up, and your parents was like, if you just do your homework now, you don't got to worry about it. And you were like, nah, I'll do it later. i do it later. And then you never did it. And then you go into school and teacher's like, where's your homework? And you're like, oh, I, did, I didn't do it. And then they're like, you failed. And you're never going to get a good job. And you're going to work at McDonald's your whole life. And sorry, that um, we will see you on the flippity-dippity. Oh, yeah. <laughs>